Good morning and welcome to Reptile Info. So today, I just want to talk to you about the differences between male and like how to uh, sex your leopard geckos and the differences between normals and giants. So today, what we're going to do is start off with this lovely giant. His well, we've named him Titan because he's quite big. He's he's not. But he's not uh, the heaviest, don't get me wrong, there are giants out there that weigh up to 120, 130 something grams, where he weighs 105 grams, which doesn't sound that big, but he is completely healthy, he's got a nice chunky tail, and he's relatively large, so giants will get longer than, well basically from the tip of your finger, past the palm of your wrist, there's a general size difference. Um, now you can see I don't know what morph he is exactly. I've got a feeling he may have some kind of a tiny bit of tangerine or or some. He may even have a bit of tremper in him. I'm not hundred percent sure. Now, if anyone knows out there what you know morph he is, please you know let me know in the comments below. But so genuine so males. This is the best way to show you how the difference between the men and the female. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So underneath the tail there, see these lines here? I don't know if the camera will focus or not. So you've got like these little dots here. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus. There you go. So you see them dots? See, that's, that's how you know if it's a male. And plus you've got these two lumps here, which are its, as you know, its testicles. And that's how you know if it's male or female or not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you my female. Let me just refocus my camera. Right. So I'm going to get my female out. Her name is Ziggy. And she is, oh, she's my angel. She's my absolute babe. Come on, baby. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's it, come on. That good girl, there you go. So here is my female leopard gecko. And she is a trampa, chocolate trampa albino. Uh, from what I've been told. Now, I'm not 100% clued up on morphs uh, with leopard geckos and stuff like that, so, but I'm, I'm just showing you a few bits. So, now, females, as you can see, she's a lot smaller, and this is a normal. Now, the male and female normal um, geckos won't really get much bigger than this. Now, her from head to tail is, for me, is exactly from tip of my finger to here, then my wrist. Now, with females, if I can show you, if she'll let me, because she, there you go, come on baby. See, there's no lines there, there's no bulges, that's how you know she's a female. Now, leopard geckos, their general diet consists of millworms, waxworms, um, the odd crickets and hoppers here and there. Um, it's like a, more like a treat, I'd have said, but when I first got Ziggy, she, Demolished mealworms, demolished them, and all of a sudden she just went off of them. So I started giving her crickets, and she loves crickets. Um, but what you need to do, and what you need to remember with geckos, is you need to give them food supplements, um, part of their diet, like vitamins and what have you. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to go and grab the supplements that I use for these guys and my snakes, um, so they don't get uh, met metabolic bone disease. So, and they are, lizards are renowned for getting it if you don't get the correct diet properly. So, I'm going to put you back there, baby. I oh, know, I oh, know. Right, go on then. There you go. And I'll be back in two ticks. So, two ticks has gone by. Now, this is the first supplement that I like to use for my leopard geckos. Now, the best thing to do is before you feed, say if you're using mealworms, waxworms, or flat, when you put them in the little food bowl, just give them a light dusting, and that should be fine. Um, with crickets and so on and stuff like that, that's gonna hop around and you know be all around the tank. What you wanna do is just very lightly dust, or get a little bowl, fill it with the uh, supplement stuff, which is a powder. I don't know if you'll be able to say that, it says powder. And just, you know, kind of roll a minute, just a minute a bit, then give it to your, your gecko or any lizard that you've got. And uh, so basically, 
this uh, is vitamin and calcium, calcium supplement, which I like to use. Um, also get a little milk bottle lid, put some in there, leave it here, anywhere in the tank, in preferably one of the corners or near the food. So, because what they like to do is sometimes they know if they need a bit more vitamins and so on, but they might not want to necessarily eat. So they'll go over and just give it a little lick and so on every now and again, just to make sure that they do not um, starve of the correct supplements and vitamins that they need. Second one I like to use is this, okay? And I can't actually pronounce the name of this, um, but basically I use this one mostly for my snakes. Um, but I do give the geckos this also because it's just a bit more supplements and so on. So what I do is I do a little bit of a mixture. I do more of this than I do the other one. Um, and also what I found when I did have problems with her feeding, um, I thought I'd try this. So my brother-in-law gave me this to try. So I've, I've tried it and she, she kind of likes it. Um, and it says it's a blend of flavouring agents and small size farm raised insects. So it's all natural, it's all produced correctly. Because um, otherwise, if you do not feed, if you do not give this to your reptiles, especially lizards, they will get metabolic bone disease. Now that is horrendous. In some cases it's only a tiny bit where it may be just a finger or like a toe that's slightly disformed and so on. Or it could potentially be a lot worse where the reptile with geckos, uh, monitor lizards, it doesn't really matter what lizard it is, and bearded dragons, you know, bearded dragons can get metabolic bone disease if they're not given the correct, correct UV light and the correct food supplements and so on, and the correct diet. And I've seen some cases where the lizard's arms are folded up into itself like this and it can't move anywhere. Its back legs are knackered and it's just, it's just horrific. And people out there that say, oh, they don't need supplements, they do. They they, they would in the wild. In the wild, it's different because they can find them supplements, whether that's salt they need, they can lick it off a rock and so on. So that's what I like to use for Ziggy. Now, Ziggy, I love her to bits. She's not quite the weight that she was because she did go off food for a little while. And I found out that was due to the substrate I was using originally. Now, originally, the, um, sorry, bear with me two seconds. Sorry about that, my phone glitched out a bit. Um, so Ziggy is not as big as she was. Uh, she did lose a little bit of weight. Now that isn't down to me neglecting or anything like that. That is just simply down to the fact that me being at the time inexperienced with geckos and I've never had lizards before um, until I think just over a year ago now. Um, so Ziggy was my very first lizard I ever owned. So, for me, it was like a learning thing. Yet again, I was speaking to professionals and you know researching and checking. And what it turned out to be is the substrate. The substrate I was using was well, she just she wasn't used to the uh, reptile carpet. You see, now the reptile carpet is brilliant, but she just for her, I'm, I'm guessing she must have you know found it uncomfortable or you know there was something there. So I removed that, give it a bark, and she slowly getting there it's not an overnight thing you can't force feed an animal to get big you just can't do it it's like you, the good the, the good old saying is you can take a horse to water but you can't make it drink so it's the same with these guys uh, you you just can't make them do something you you, you want them to do and it and you know it's for their own uh, well-being but the second part as well for caring for these guys is i like to use this all right now this stuff's brilliant for cleaning reptile stuff um it doesn't it has no um perfumes or anything it doesn't smell it it dries once you've wiped it it evaporates and it, it kills a lot of the uh, germs and and what have you in the tank so let's say if it's defecated up the side of the tank or whatever and you forgot about it because it's hidden behind a plant or something where that can start to smell and it can start to, you know, form bacteria, diseases and, and what have you. So I like to make sure I clean my reptiles up regularly with this stuff. I also do use, um, uh, I haven't got any at the minute, I need to go and get some more. But when I clean the glass, I don't use glass cleaner, like your typical house stuff. Um, you can use this, this is just the same, but I like to use some uh, proper stuff.
and I can just get more animal animal friendly. Let's just say, just in case they end up licking the glass or something like that, which they do do. I mean, she <laughs> Ziggy loves to lick, um, and she's just one of those. But what I'm also going to sh uh, show you as well, um, I'm going to get. I'll get you back out, Zig. Come on. That's it, baby. Come on. That's it. That's my baby. So, now, a lot of people say, which is true, that they can drop their tails when they're stressed or if they, you know, if they feel like they're in danger, they can drop a tail. It will grow back. It won't grow back like it's original, like this is original. She's never dropped a tail. But what I have started to notice is her, she's growing her little toes back. Now, for me personally, like I said, um, I'm gaining the experience from doing. So I've never owned a lizard or geckos and that, so I'm doing everything else correctly. But she had lost some toes when I first got her. Um, and she did lose a toe um, at one point, which I didn't notice, which is my fault. But since then, I've made sure that mistake doesn't happen again because it's not fair on the animal. And she know you know I love you, baby, don't you? Yeah, you want a good baby. Um, and I don't know if I can show you on, I don't think she'll let me, but, oh no, come here baby, come on dog, okay, you don't want me to, I won't, I won't make you, I won't make you, but here, I don't know if you can see, they're on a couple of her toes, she's missed, um, they were right down to the knuckle, so right flat like that, and they are very slowly starting to grow back, I don't know if she'll let me show you, because she just can be a bit touchy, can you see, so, they're starting to grow back, and I didn't think they could grow toes back. I don't think they'll ever grow back properly, but I've got a feeling that they they will grow back. So these animals are very hardy. They are very resi resilient to their surroundings and their environment. And these are just amazing first pets. Like if you are going or looking for a lizard or a gecko or anything like that, I would suggest getting yourself a gecko. They are beautiful. They're I mean, look at her. She's not. She's not chirping at me. She's not. She's not scared. She's. She knows she's completely safe, and she knows that I love her to bits. Hey, you know what, baby? You know I love you to bits. So, and they do actually respond quite well. Instead of just opening the tank, putting your hand in and grabbing them, and they get all like, oh god, what's that? I would just tap on the glass, saying, "Hey, baby, it's only dad," and she knows. She knows it's me. And sometimes, a lot of the time, she comes out of a hide. She comes and comes up to the glass, and you know, when people say reptiles don't, you know, recognize or anything like that, or you know, got a very small brain, these are very intelligent animals. And she knows that I would never harm her or do any ill, ill mannered towards her. She is my baby, and I see her like I do with my dog. But like I was saying, these are amazing animals. But if you're going to get one, please do some research, make sure you get the correct substrates. Don't make the same mistake I did. Do not, please do not get sand. If you get sand, she will get um, like gut rot right where it, uh, not gut rot, right, but like it clogs up her internal organs when she's eating and stuff and it gets in her mouth and, and the dust and stuff and it can be some really dangerous for them. Um, even calcium sand, um, because there's too much calcium and some of the other bits and bobs are in that sand, which is supposed to be safe for animals. They can still get clogged on it. So. I'd suggest maybe like research their natural environment. So like all very rocky and, you know, very stony kind of environment. Cause they're from India, um, like from Pakistan, uh, Iraq, not Iraq, a Pakistani area, like up in like the mountainside, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, so I don't suggest AstroTurf. I don't suggest, well, they do well on tissue. Um, but I feel like if you give them that, bit of natural environment where they would thrive that I reckon you know you can't go wrong because it's reenacting their natural uh, habitat make sure the food's right it's sat in the other and you have a perfectly healthy animal and they will you know they'll go on to live for I don't know where apparently I've I've heard about people having these for 20 plus years I'm not sure I'm not going to say that's true I'm not going to say it's not true because I'm not sure. From what I have, what it says in some of the, the books and whatever, they can live for quite a while, not as long as a snake or any of these bigger creatures, uh, reptiles. But if you see, I'll put my finger near her mouth and 
She won't bite me. She might get a lick or she might bite no dagger. Your finger out my face. Oh, and if you are a new keeper, um, yes, they can hear. They also feel vibration through the floor. They're not like a snake. They've got these pits inside of the head. I don't know if you can see it. Let me try and get the camera to focus on that. There you go. So the big pits inside of the head. And that is like, that's their ears. So please don't, don't go poking it. Um, I've known people to smell, oh, what's that? And then start poking it. Please don't. It's their ears and it's been very sensitive. So I always suggest if you let your kids near them, don't let them go screaming and shouting near them because then the you could start all this animal. Um, I'm going to put her back quickly. And then we're just gonna get tight and quickly. Come here, buddy. Oh, you're a big boy. You are a big lad. Now, he is. You got a bit of dirt on you, mate. There is a. I brought him in a moist hide box because that's what they were in. Um, not together. Ziggy was in hers. He was in his home. Uh, but I brought it in just so they could somewhere soft to to stay whilst I'm doing this. Um, but yeah, like you can see how much bigger he is. He's a little bit more feisty, um, and they can make noises. Uh, sometimes they might make a little chirpy noise at you, like a rawr, rawr. almost like a caiman, like a baby crocodile or alligator when they go. Rawr. So they can make them noises, but it's very rare you ever hear that. And if you look how chunky this boy's tail is, I mean that's how you know he's a well looked after animal. He's, you know, he he eats regularly. He has the correct diet. He has no bone diseases. He has no problems. He's just a wonderful animal. Um, also, a bit of information that I forgot to mention. I'm sorry this video's gone on a bit, but I forgot to mention is <clears throat> when leopard geckos shed their skin. Chances of you actually seeing it are very slim, because they don't shed the skin and leave it like snakes do. They shed their skin and then eat their own skin, which is completely healthy. It's fine. That's what they do in the wild. So if you see it start flaking and it's eating its own skin, don't panic, don't worry, that's what they do. And plus it saves you trying to discard it really and trying to pick out all these little bits of skin. I wish snakes would eat their own skin to be honest because sometimes when they don't shed as one and they, they I call it scatter shedding, where the environment may have gone a little bit dry <clears throat> and the bit of skin may stick here and there, it flakes, especially with bigger snakes, that it seems to flake off in little bits. Um, and yes, yeah, pain in the bum to, to try and pick out individually so but yeah this boy is is healthy he's big he's he's lovely he's a, he's a little bit more active than what Ziggy is but that's just down to personality and these animals do have a personality he's got a very boisterous like on book get out of my way kind of thing but yeah he's, he's just beautiful so please if any questions at all oh 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 I'm gonna have to show you this. This is, this is I've never seen her do this before. This is this is cool. I don't know if she's gonna do it now. Is she gonna do it? No, you can see the size difference quite quite a bit there, can't you? Between normal and giant. She's fully grown, but I've never seen her dig before. I don't know if what she's doing. I think that's what they do in the wild, they do dig. It may be because she may be grounded, I'm not sure. Now I'm trying to breed my well, Ziggy with a giant. Um, that is possible, you can do it. There, are, I know of people that have done it and it's been successful. Like I said in one of my videos before, I think I said in one of my videos, I can't remember now. But the chance, it, like, out of a hundred eggs that they would lay in a season, if, if you know, it depends how many times you've bred her. Um, if she, just say, for example, she lays a hundred eggs, 98% of them, or 97, 97 to 98% of them are going to be, be giants. So, with giants, the tanks don't have to be any bigger than what they would for a normal. Nothing changes. The only difference is, is your leopard gecko is slightly bigger. They won't really get that much bigger than Titan. Um, maybe a little bit longer, not too much. I mean, he is fully grown. Um, I mean, not all of them have to weigh 125 grams or 100 grams of this. Or I find it's the same with people. We all weigh different differently. It doesn't necessarily we're not healthy just because someone may be fifteen stone and someone's six stone. It doesn't necessarily mean it's just you know, some people are built differently and I feel like it's the same with animals. You know, they've got their own bone structure, they've got their own, you know, metabolism and so on. So but yeah, um if you like this video, please give it give it a thumbs up. 
Um, please subscribe to my channel, uh, Reptile Info. I'll try and do as much information as I can. Next year, I will be getting some more reptiles um, because at the minute, like I said, I've only got these two uh, lizards and two snakes. At the minute, I haven't got my other snake out as of yet because she's not long yet. So I don't want to get around, stress her out and make her regurgitate her food and so on, which can be quite um, unpleasant and not safe for the for the snake to regurgitate its food. So she won't be out anytime soon. She won't be out now for probably another month, two months, because she, well, she had two giant rats, put it that way, and I fed her one, she had that. Um, I tried to feed my other snake, she won't eat it, so I threw that rat in the bin, left it a couple of weeks. Um, tried to feed her again, not the one that's already yet, not Lady, my other one that I've been getting out. Um, tried to give her a rat, weren't interested, I thought I'd leave it overnight, she'd be fine. The other one's happily tucked away in a in a little home. Next morning, and I'm like, God, you're massive. Look at the size, of literally, she's like fat. Um, so she isn't going to need a meal now for whew, a good two, three months, maybe. So. It's a good thing about reptiles, like snakes especially, is you don't have to, once you give them a big meal, they can go weeks and weeks without feeding. So as long as you've got water and stuff like that, they can go quite a while without feeding. So, you know, keep that in mind. But tomorrow we're going to do another video um, at some point. I might do a little bit of like a vlog tomorrow because I'm, I'm going to the zoo tomorrow. Maybe, touch wood, the weather's all okay uh, with my mum and my son. So hopefully I might do a couple of little videos here and there in the zoo and what have you so anyway give this video a thumbs up if you like it please comment in the section below if you have any questions yeah again i'm sorry about the editing um, i haven't got around to any of that my laptop's broke and i'm using my phone so please please bear with me please subscribe and share and show your friends peace out reptile lovers